I'd like to welcome back here on One America News, Daniel Turner, the executive director of Power of the Future. Daniel, thank you for sitting down with us. Great to be back with you. Now, I want to talk about this recent string that we've seen all in one week of violence from the left against Trump supporters. We've seen a bus trying to run down Trump supporters and Jacksonville who are just registering people to vote, a 15-year-old kid at the polls as a volunteer getting smacked in the face. Uh, we've seen an office in Northern California being smashed open. The guy's now charged with attempted arson. And I know that you've actually covered a lot of violence from the environmental movement. We're seeing some of that in Canada right now. Is that right? Exactly. And, and violence of the, of the environmental left has been prevalent since the 90s here in America. And even back then, it got very little coverage because when you do things on behalf of the earth or combating climate change, you're given a, a pretty wide berth by the mainstream media. And in the same mentality right now, they would say, well, they're just combating the president. And so therefore, it's ultimately a good thing. And there's a tolerance level of violence when it comes to pet issues of the left. So is that the angle then? There's some altruistic goal behind those committing the violence when it comes from the left. So therefore, the mainstream media doesn't go after it the same way they would if it was a Trump supporter or if it was Charlottesville too or something like that. Exactly. There's a manual you can buy online. I'm almost reluctant to say the name of it because I don't want people to even look at it. But it is available online for purchase and it was put together by eco-terror groups, groups that were designated by our Department of Justice as domestic terrorist organizations. And it's how to sabotage pipelines, it's how to inflict damage, it's literally how to do acts of terrorism that put pe people's lives at risk, that pe put communities at risk, that damage the environment. And this is tolerated. It is amazing to me that you can buy booklets. And if, if this were Islamic terrorism, how to do bomb making booklets, it would get shut down. Um, if this were other type of, of, of terror networks to how to create this type of violence, the, the government would shut it down. But when you do it on behalf of the environment, it seems to be tolerated. And there's a great article, Post Millennial, which is a Canadian website, is actually covering this, where uh, they're now doing their version of the Standing Rock protest. Uh, they're protesting pipelines in Canada now. Uh, but, and yet, Post Millennial breaks this down, how there are anarchist blogs up in Canada telling people how to use chemicals that can uh, destroy and sabotage steel railroad lines and railroad tracks, and also uh, explaining to people how they can do it without leaving fingerprints or DNA evidence. I mean, in any other society, this would clearly be an example of, of terrorism or criminal activity. Yeah, in the state of Louisiana, the violence against pipeline workers became so severe that last year the, the legislature and the governor passed new laws, special protections just for people who work in the pipeline industry, because again, in the name of the environment, sabotaging their equipment, putting their lives at risk was considered acceptable behavior. It's, 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 it's an unbelievable leniency that the government and, and the political left and the media has for this activity. Now, we use these phrases like domestic terrorism, or in this case, economic sabotage. Do you think that those labels make sense? Oh, I think they're absolutely pertinent, and I think they could be even stronger. Uh, you go back to the, the, the early 90s and into the year 2000s, when groups like uh, Earth Liberation Front and Earth First, they were burning down ski lodges, they were sabotaging uh, gondolas and ski lifts, they were spiking trees so that loggers would begin to cut them and the, the chainsaws would blow back. I mean, people did die because of domestic terrorist activities, but again, because it's done for the earth or for the environment, it was given much more leniency than any other group. What could the Department of Justice do uh, to help correct some of this activity? I think you need to come in strong and protect laws that currently exist. Here in Washington, D.C., for example, there's a group that regularly shuts down traffic. It, it uh, shuts down the metro. It lays down on the road. It snarls traffic on a regular basis. These protests are planned two and three days in advance. The mayor knows about it. The, the, the police department knows about it. And they're just given access to block traffic for hours and hours. And I wonder if a pro-life group came and said on behalf of life, we're going to lay down on the corner of 14th and K for five hours. Would the cops just walk away and say, well, that's just a protest. We're going to allow it. Or would they round everybody up? So the, the government, the best thing that they could do is they could enforce existing laws so that eco groups on behalf of the earth or climate change or whatever their cause have to follow the same laws that the rest of us do. Daniel Turner, always a pleasure. Power of the future. Thank you. Want to see more videos like this? Click on the link below and subscribe to One America News on YouTube and call your cable provider and kindly demand that One America News is added to your lineup. Call and subscribe today.